For shoulder flexion and extension, you're going to place the axis of the goniometer over the humeral head. The stationary arm will remain parallel to the trunk and the moving arm will follow the arm as it moves into shoulder flexion. So Addison, I want you to raise your arm up as high as you can for me. Can you give me any more? Good, all right. And Addison is at 170 degrees of shoulder flexion. The normal range of motion for shoulder flexion is 170 degrees. Now for shoulder extension, the goniometer position is going to remain the same. Axis over the humeral head, stationary arm parallel to the trunk, and moving arm follows the humerus. So Addison, I want you to reach your arm back as far as you can for me. Good. Can you give me any more? Okay. And Addison has 54 degrees of shoulder extension. The norm for shoulder extension is approximately 60 degrees. For shoulder abduction, you're going to place the axis of the goniometer over the posterior side of the humeral head. The stationary arm is going to be parallel to the trunk and the moving arm is going to follow the humerus. So Addison, I want you to raise your arm up like this as far as you can. Can you give me any more? Good. Addison is at 175 degrees of shoulder abduction. The norm for shoulder abduction is about 170 degrees. For shoulder adduction, your client is going to be positioned with their arm at 90 degrees shoulder flexion. You're going to place the axis of the goniometer on the anterior shoulder over the acromion. You're going to place the stationary arm parallel with the right and left acromion across the neck, and the moving arm is going to follow the humerus. So Addison, I want you to cross your shoulder over your body. Okay. And Addison is at 130 degrees of shoulder adduction. The normal range of motion for shoulder adduction is 130 degrees. To measure shoulder internal rotation in the abducted position, your client will be shoulder abducted to 90 degrees and elbow flexed to 90 degrees. The axis of the goniometer will be placed over the olecranon, the stationary arm will be pointing anteriorly, and the moving arm is going to follow the ulna. So Addison, I'd like you to internally rotate your arm, please. Okay, thank you. Addison has 60 degrees of internal rotation in the shoulder abducted position. The norm for this position is approximately 70 degrees. There are two positions to measure shoulder external rotation. The first position is with the shoulder adducted. The shoulder will be adducted to the body and the elbow will be flexed at 90 degrees. The axis will be placed under the olecranon the stationary arm is going to be horizontal facing anteriorly and the moving arm is going to follow the ulna as she moves into external rotation. Okay. And Addison is at 85 degrees of shoulder external rotation. The norm for shoulder external rotation in the AD ducted position is 80 degrees. Now we're going to measure shoulder external rotation in the abducted position. So Addison is going to be flexed to 90 degrees at the elbow and adducted to 90 degrees at the shoulder. The axis is going to be placed on the olecranon. The stationary arm will be pointing anteriorly and the moving arm is going to follow the ulna again. So Addison move like this. Can you give me any more? Good. And Addison is at 90 degrees of shoulder external rotation in the abducted position. The norm for this position is approximately 90 degrees. To measure the range of motion for elbow flexion, the client is going to be positioned with their shoulder adducted and their elbow extended. 
you're going to place the axis of the goniometer in line with the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. The stationary arm is going to be parallel to the humerus and the moving arm will follow the radius. So Addison, I want you to bring your hand up to your shoulder and the client's arm is, forearm is going to remain supinated. Okay, and Addison has 145 degrees of elbow flexion. The norm for elbow flexion is 135 to 150 degrees. For elbow extension, the position is going to remain the same. The axis will be in line with the lateral epicondyle, stationary arm will be parallel to the humerus, and moving arm will be parallel to the radius. Addison, can you extend any? Addison has about five degrees of hyperextension of the elbow. However, the normal range of motion for elbow extension is about zero degrees. To measure forearm supination, your client will be positioned with their shoulder adducted and their elbow flexed to 90 degrees. The axis of the goniometer is going to be placed on the ulnar border of the volar aspect of the wrist. The stationary arm is going to be perpendicular to the floor and the moving arm is going to be resting against the volar aspect of the wrist. Now Addison, I want you to flip your palm up for me. Good. And Addison has 85 degrees of forearm supination. The normal range of motion for forearm supination is 80 to 90 degrees. For forearm pronation, the client is going to be in the same position. The axis of the goniometer is going to be placed on the ulnar border of the dorsal aspect of the wrist. The stationary arm will remain perpendicular to the floor, and the moving arm is going to rest across the dorsal aspect of the forearm, parallel with the ulnar and radial styloid. Now, Addison, I want you to flip your palm over for me. Good. Addison has 90 degrees of forearm pronation. The norm for forearm pronation is 80 to 90 degrees. To measure flexion and extension of the wrist, your client will be positioned seated at a table with their feet flat on the floor in good posture. Their forearm will be resting on the ulnar border on the table surface and their fingers will be relaxed. To measure wrist flexion, you're going to place the axis of the goniometer just distal to the radial styloid over the anatomical snuff box. The stationary arm will remain in line with the radius and the moving arm will follow the metacarpal of the index finger. Now Addison, I would like you to bend your wrist forward for me. Okay, and Addison has 85 degrees of wrist flexion. The normal range of motion for wrist flexion is approximately 80 degrees. For wrist extension, your axis, stationary arm, and moving arm are going to remain in the same position. So Addison, I'd like you to bend your wrist back as far as you can go. Good. And Addison has approximately 90 degrees of wrist extension. However, the norm for this movement is approximately 70 degrees. To measure both wrist, ulnar, and radial deviation, your client will be positioned seated in a chair at the table. Forearm will be placed flat on the table with the forearm pronated. The axis of the goniometer will be placed on the dorsum of the wrist at the base of the third metacarpal. You should be able to palpate a hollow space over the capitate bone. The stationary arm is going to remain parallel with the forearm, and the moving arm is going to remain parallel with the third metacarpal. Okay, Addison, I'd like you to tilt your wrist to the left for ulnar deviation. Good. Addison has 30 degrees of ulnar deviation. The norm for this movement is approximately 30 degrees. Now, positioned back in neutral, we're going to place the goniometer in the same position with the axis at the base of the third metacarpal 
the stationary arm parallel with the forearm and the moving arm parallel with the third metacarpal. Now this time I'd like you to tilt your wrist to the left for radial deviation. Good. Addison has about 22 degrees of radial deviation. The norm for this movement is approximately 20 degrees.